Okay, today we're going to talk about the basics of pseudo noble gas configurations. Uh, these are electron configurations that occur in some transition metals, a couple of which are gold and silver, hence the background graphic that I have. So in order to uh, introduce this, I want to start out by contrasting it with the formation of noble gas uh, configurations uh, with both metals and nonmetals. And the example that I have first is magnesium, where magnesium loses two electrons to get a stable noble gas configuration uh, like neon. And of course, when it does that, it has two extra protons left over, forming the magnesium ion with a plus two charge. Uh, so uh, the, once you look at the number of electrons that are lost, uh, then you can pretty much figure out the charge without any problem. Uh, on the end of the nonmetals, there's nitrogen, which will become nitride by gaining three electrons and uh, forming the nitride with a negative three charge. Uh, and uh, once it, again, once you figure out the number of electrons gained, then you cut the charge down without any trouble. The main rule of thumb to think about as we go along uh, over the next few uh, illustrations is that you typically don't find charges on ions that are larger than three, either positive or negative. All right, so it doesn't say that they don't exist, just that if you do a calculation with coming up with a, with a charge one or the other, if you get something above three uh, as far as the absolute value, you might want to look at it again. Okay, and uh, the main thing we're going to talk about today are charges in some metals in the in the center section in the transition metals. Uh, the one that I'm doing first is zinc. So you've got argon and then 4s2 and then 3d10. And of course, this is argon, 4s2, 3d10. And our, uh, zinc is right there. And it forms, uh, it does form ions, but you'll probably guess that it doesn't form ions quite the same way that some of the other ones were that we were just looking at. Uh, if zinc, for example, were to want to uh, get a stable noble gas configuration like krypton, it would have to gain six electrons, which is just pretty unlikely uh, to be able to happen. Again, it does happen. It just doesn't happen that terribly often. But if it did that, it, this was the, would be the electron configuration that it would have. However, it doesn't happen. So resetting here and looking at a different uh, direction. So if we were to try to get a stable noble gas configuration like argon, that would be even more unlikely because we'd have to lose something like 12 electrons. So you'd have to come along and knock all these electrons out and um, go all the way down even to the 4S over here to form a stable noble gas configuration like argon. And it turns out that, that that doesn't happen. So again, to reset and actually show you the way that it actually does happen, you notice here that we've got the electrons in the entire third energy level that are all filled up. And then the fourth energy level, we've only got this 4s. So what actually happens is we lose an electron here in the 4s, we lose in another electron here in the 4s. And so now, uh, instead of having AR 4s2 3d10, we lose, we've just lost those electrons in the 4s, and so instead we'll have AR 3d10, which is a zinc ion, which has a plus two charge. And we know that because it's just lost those two electrons, and it's got two extra protons. So to summarize, we've got the 4s that's empty, but we've got the third energy level that is completely filled with 18 electrons. Uh, and they, those 18 electrons are all of the same energy level, as I just said, and all of that is much more stable. So that's why it's preferred. So just to add a wrinkle, this is the basics of forming pseudo gas, pseudo noble gas configurations. There's always a wrinkle to things like this, and I'm going to show uh, this now. So one over from zinc is copper, and we have the same basic thing going on. But if you look here, the electron configuration that I wrote out here says argon 4s2 3d9, which is pretty much what anybody would guess would be the electron configuration of copper. 
Uh, if you count the blocks over here, there's nine blocks. You're right there at copper. But it turns out that that is extremely unstable. So we're talking about Charlie Sheen unstable or Kanye unstable. Either way, this just does not exist in nature. It's too unstable. What does happen is that an electron from the 4S uh, jumps over to the 3D. So we have a completely filled 3D, which is very stable, and a half filled 4S, which is also stable. And the electron configuration ends up being AR 4S1 3D10. So when you lose that one electron to form an ion, it's going to end up being AR 3D10, just like zinc was, but with the exception, of course, that the copper atom has only lost one electron, so it'll have a positive one charge. And you end up getting the entire third energy level completely filled, which is very stable, which is one of the characteristic uh, traits of a pseudo noble gas configuration. So now the 18 outer electrons are all in the same energy level and are more stable. And it's, it's also of note that any of the atoms below copper are able to have a pseudo noble gas configuration. Of course, any of the atoms below zinc are also have, able to have a pseudo noble gas configuration. Summary of points about pseudo noble gas configurations. These are some of the most important things to remember. First is that it only happens with some elements in the transition metals. No other metals do this. This means if you have a question about pseudo noble gas configuration of potassium or something like that, it's a trick question. Uh, secondly, they will lose S electrons in the highest numbered energy level while not losing any in the D orbitals of the next highest numbered energy level. So it will lose something like that. And then, boom, we've made a pseudo-noble gas configuration. All right, this S orbital losing its electrons empties the highest numbered energy level. And this leaves a total of 18 electrons in the next energy level, which is made of the outer S, P, and D sublevels. And those are the big points. And that is it.